Hello everyone, I'm Kamis Art and welcome back to my channel. This week we're going to be doing part two of my sketchbook tour. Now I know I stopped on Baby Yoda last week but the second part of my sketchbook is going to go really really fast because I went through the sketchbook quite fast. I was really ambitious and just wanted to finish this sketchbook. So by the end of it, you can see I'm throwing just one, I'm throwing just one character, one drawing onto a piece of paper and just wasting a ton of space. And you can definitely see it here with baby Yoda being on the left side of this page and my intentions of drawing the Mandalorian on the right and never finishing that. So on to the next page. So on this page in particular, I decided that I was going to really try and understand how to draw faces. And so my thinking at the time was if I can draw a face from memory, after drawing the basic structure, the planes, anatomy and the full face, I'll see what I need to improve on. And so as you can see when I turn the page here, that I tried to draw Michael Sarah from memory after doing the last four drawings and I, can f I found out that I was slowly moving features off to the left so I said in my mind that I should try and keep everything centered and try to pay attention to that when I'm trying to draw something from memory. And then you can see I did it again with a few more faces following the next couple of pages but this one in particular is uh, Daniel Radcliffe. I did the structure, the planes, the anatomy, the full face, and then from memory. And then I always wrote what I thought at the time that I could improve on. And I keep doing it. This is, who is this? Paul Dano. And you can see here, I had a lot of trouble with odd angles. And so even in the full face, there's a lot of mistakes. With Ki Hong Lee and Lakeith Stanfield. Yeah, and then on this page, I had decided, okay, I've drawn a couple of faces from memory. So I was just going to try and doodle some of these random faces and see what I could come up with and it did not come out well it's a really bad doodle page and then I decided to test myself I said okay can I draw a person and this was my attempt at trying to draw someone from memory in a pose you can see it came out very 2d very flat a lot of the proportions are wrong yeah so after Doing that, I decided I need to learn a bit more about the anatomy and I need to learn more about proportions. So I went online and I looked up Proko and I followed a lot of his tutorials. This here is just me copying his joint tutorial. And this here you can see he made you turn those joints or move the hinges in the body to kind of give get an idea of how they move. Same thing here, I did some of the legs, the collarbones, and the feet. Then here's a couple from memory, I think. Yeah. Then on this page, it was an attempt at a storyboard. It's not a really good story, you can pause the video if you like. But I finished that and then at the end I was like, okay, how would these characters look like? And I attempted to draw a woman and a kid and <laughs> they didn't come out very well. Then I decided to go back to my face drawings. But this time I decided to do just the construction, the anatomy, the planes with the shading and then the memory imagination because I wanted it all to be on one page. Yep, another one. Another one with Stephen Ewan. I don't really think it looks like him, but... Yep, 
and Ross Butler. <laughs> this one always makes me laugh when I go back to it, even at the time. I thought the bottom one here, when I try to draw it without reference, he looks like he's crying. <laughs> And then I went back to my studies. I went on to the next one after the joints. It was called the spine. I wrote down all my notes and drew my little diagrams. Some more spine studies. Yeah, the next couple of pages are just spine studies. And then on this, I decided that I needed a profile picture for my Instagram. So I went on to Instagram and I found some pieces that I liked and I tried to find what I liked about them. And then I tried to combine it all together. And I came up with this. And then I'll show the digital version in a moment up on the screen. But it was one of my first digital pieces that I ever did. And I, I had so much trouble creating a piece that looked decent. Then this was some Dr. Disrespect fan art that I never finished. And then this was a Plains versus Fully Shaded Face. I was really trying to learn how to draw pro portraits properly. And this is me drawing some more face planes, trying to make sense of them. Looking back at it now, I know that it's not very accurate as what to what it actually should be looking like. Some more plain drawings. Here you can see I was definitely getting a bit lazy and I really wanted to finish it up. I did two total gestures on two pages. You can see here I wrote 10 minutes like it's something to be proud of. Yeah. And then 10 minutes on this one as well, another gesture drawing. And then here's some pelvis studies that I did for Proko's lessons that I was still looking at. There's quite a few pages of these, so I'll just flip through them. And then here I came across an artist on YouTube called Angel Ganev, and he did excellent videos on how to draw a portrait. When I first started out, I was really clueless and I was just trying to draw from references all the time from Pinterest. And he showed what you need to find in a reference. He showed me the Asaro head, which is what this is. And he also said that you need to learn the planes of the sorrow head and that it applies to every single person because every single person has the same bone structure, whether it be stretched a little bit or a little bit changed. So on the top here is the minor planes, which was giving me a lot of trouble. And then I decided I was going to do the major planes and I found out that all the minor planes that I was drawing at the top were also on the major plane side, but it was just indicated in a bit more shadow instead of a hard line. Then on the left here, I have a bit of Stardew Valley art, a little bit of fan art, and I never finished it because I felt it wasn't good enough to finish. Oh well. And then here I did some more ribcage studies on Proko's channel. Some more ribcage studies trying to relate the two. You can see here in these really early studies of mine that I have the ribcage and the pelvis way too far down. It just goes to show I didn't have any idea what I was doing. <laughs> yep, more ribcage studies. Then here I decided I was going to do a shaded portrait of a person I found on Pinterest came out pretty well. I decided I was going to use some charcoal pencils along with my graphite and it came out quite nice. I was really happy with how I was able to push the contrast in this at the time. And then this, I have this piece of paper here because this whole piece is done in charcoal and I didn't want it rubbing off on the other piece. 
and I didn't want it rubbing off on the other piece. But here's another one with really strong shadows and I was trying to apply what I learned from those Angel Gunna videos into this. Here's another piece done in charcoal and graphite again. I, you can see here I got a little bit lazy with the shirt, but I'm pretty happy with the face. Then here was another piece that I did, but I really didn't like it, so I just used alcohol marker on the other side. And then <laughs> I drew this from a reference on Pinterest, and I thought she looked really creepy. So I decided I was going to try to make her into a doll, but that never really worked because I ruined it with the markers that I was trying to learn how to use at the time. They were the Spectrum Noir alcohol brush tip markers. Then on this page, I had seen a bunch of Oliver Sin's work on Instagram, and I really liked his work because it was so fluid and had so much motion in it. So I decided to try and do that really quickly. But in doing that, I found that I made the eyebrow too big and I made the lips way too big. Then here's another charcoal drawing that I really didn't like. And then to do something totally different from charcoal, I decided I was going to do a line art drawing. Then you can see I gave up on this pencil drawing. And then this is a line art and colored pencil piece. I really liked it at the time, but now I don't particularly like it. You can see I did a couple more line art pieces trying to find my style with my line art. Just trying to simplify things, make it look interesting, but still like the references that I'd found. And then I did some more anatomy studies from Proko, of course. Yep, some more. Finally another page of them and then another line art piece. Then on this piece, I was going to make it a line art piece, but I really didn't like the shapes that I was using in it, and I found it really ugly, and I didn't want to make it worse by putting line art on top of it, so I just left it as is. And this is another line art piece. You can see there is a couple more that I wasn't too happy with, that I didn't line again. And then on this page, I had just started a course on Adobe Illustrator. And so I had to create two pieces in that course. And this was me trying to find inspiration on what to do for one of those pieces. And then these were the thumbnails for that piece that I decided to do. And then on the character on this piece, I was looking through different clothes she could wear, her hairstyle, and her pose and you can see this is my final piece before I put it onto the PC and made it into vector art then this page here was a bunch of research that I did on the next piece I was going to do which was an infographic and then I decided I was going to go through all the different logos that I would want on it the different layouts I could use and all the thumbnails that I had to come up with. Then this was character designs for my final piece. And finally, this was the finished piece before I put it onto the PC. And then at this point, I thought my sketchbook was looking, it was kind of boring, so I wanted to add more color to it, and I saw people were drawing in colored pencil on YouTube, so I decided I would give that a go. And it looks okay, but I wish I'd spent more time, especially on this piece here, developing it. I also love that there's loads of girls on this page and just a random frog head. Some more pencil art pieces you can see, I was just trying to fill up the page and I wasn't spending too much time on these. And these are a couple more pieces that I wanted to turn into line art, but I never got around to it. Some more potential line art pieces that never got finished. These are the last two in the sketchbook and it was just to say that I finished it in four months. And then on the last page you can see I swatched all my colored pencils that I'd gotten. 
I had loads of notes on people I wanted to study, things I wanted to look into, ideas of what I wanted to draw, just for myself. This is my completed sketchbook, my very first one that I ever finished. I had sketchbooks in the past, but I maybe used a page or two in them before I got bored and moved on to something else. But yeah, if anyone's looking at the Lita Art Supply sketchbook, I got it on Amazon for like 20 bucks. And I would recommend it, especially if you're a beginner and you're doing a lot of pencil art, a lot of dry medium pieces work very well in this. But wet media like alcohol markers, I didn't use any paint in this, but alcohol markers don't work on this. So I'd be very careful with what you use in this in terms of wet media. But other than that, yeah, I love this sketchbook. I think it's a huge milestone in my artistic journey and I just can't wait to keep filling up more of them. Please leave a like, share it, subscribe, and I'll see you all in the next one. Thank you guys for watching. Bye.